when I've traveled my last mile here, the Lord will be coming for me. I'll enter the lifeboat that will be near to carry
of singing we're going to have then. Since I heard about a better home, I would leave. any day to heaven's shore. I'll find sweet rest beyond the grave forevermore. Yes, I'll rejoice, oh praise the Lord, some sweet day when I walk up the great Milky Way. Sing, it's this song I'm going to sing. It's, you know, sometimes things happen and we wonder why. Why did this happen? And did, was God paying attention? But you know what? God never makes a mistake. There's a song I sing sometimes that someday he'll make it plain to me. Someday when I his face shall see. Someday from tears I shall be free. For someday... I shall understand. We may never understand it down here. But you, you, you know why, I, I just got to tell you, you know why most people from Kentucky have got a flat forehead and stoop-shouldered? You ask them a question, they go, I don't know. And you tell them anything, they go, yeah. But when we get to heaven, we're all going to have that flat forehead. When the Lord starts saying, you'll go, yeah, why did I think of that? I used to hit myself real hard, but it gave me a headache. Listen, God makes no mistakes. Have you ever seen a mother cry when she lost her little boy? Or mom and dad stand broken For their son's life has been destroyed Have you seen old age take those away Who are special to our hearts Listen then to what I say God makes no mistake
Amen. Well, good evening. Aren't you thankful God makes no mistakes? Amen. No mistake, you're here tonight. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Been a beautiful day, and it's going to get prettier here in just a minute, my brother. Brother, thank you for that singing. It's been a wonderful, uh, wonderful week this week. Uh, again, as we mentioned the other night, it's just going by so fast. Here it is Saturday, but praise God, we got tonight and tomorrow. Amen. And uh, still, still time to go. So. Uh, brother, uh, it's good to have Brother Frazee with us, uh, and I do enjoy him, uh, know him personally, and uh, know his family. His father actually is the one that married my wife and I, so uh, he was a preacher there at her church when uh, where she grew up, and uh, he was the one that married us. But it is good to see him fulfilling God's calling, and have enjoyed his preaching. Brother, come preach for us. Amen. Appreciate you. Well, amen. Thank you all for coming. On a Saturday night, sure do appreciate it. David, wonderful singing, brother, fabulous. Ain't no better than that. Well, I told you we've been eating good. Man, I like your cooking. Wow, now I know why well, the family has to come, but they want to come. Ain't nothing like being there at the Maples on a Sunday. I mean, and I think we're going to be down this week due to sickness and all, but... It's always a blast. Amen. We've been talking about things that a Christian can lose. That's why we need revival. It's a regathering of some things. It's a renewal. Amen. Let's go back and, and look at some of our landmarks to see if we're still honoring them. And what about the next generation? Man, if the devil uh, gets us in disobedience and we lose our vision, we talked about that yesterday, tonight we're going to hit our ears. I mean, God forbid that we get deaf. As Christians, we're, we're not where we ought to be, and we're going to hit some of that. Man, if we quit hearing from God, we can't grow in faith. And if we don't have faith, we can't move forward. 
uh, if we lose our faith, uh, guys, uh, we lose our purpose. Uh, it takes, for me, I, I need to be reminded often. And uh, sometimes the greatest way to uh, learn something is to hear it over and over and over again. And uh, that's just the way I learn. Now, other folks can get it on the first round, not me. i got to chew on it and then chew on it some more. And uh, this message has helped me as I've studied it. it. makes you look back and ask yourself, am I seeing the things that God would have me to see? So I want you to take your Bible, if you would, and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And at verse 9, he just mentioned some of this in his song. The Bible says, but as it is written... And what he's talking about is the wisdom. Man, listen, wisdom is for the sinner to be saved. And that wisdom is in a person, Jesus Christ. Without Christ, you're lost. Without Christ, you're under condemnation. Without Christ, you face the wrath of your own sin. Amen. So wisdom is to embrace the person who wisdom personifies, and that's Christ. You can't say you're smart and burn in hell. <laughs> Ain't no wisdom in that. So it starts with getting saved. And you say, well, I'm going to get it one of these days. You don't get to choose that. First of all, God's got to call you. Don't you think you're going to be knocking on his door? He knocks on your door. Amen. So you got to ask yourself, you know, uh, and every time you say no, the Bible says in Romans 2 that the wrath of God is building up. Every time you say no, wrath is building. Wrath is building. So if you notice what he says here, for as it is written. Now, why is that so important? If God said it, our job is to believe it. But you can't believe it until you have ears to, to hear it. He says right here, I have not seen <clears throat> nor ear heard. Neither had entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Now, I'm saved. I've embraced wisdom. I'm growing in wisdom. Amen. Every time I get in the book, I'm walking with God. We talk about fellowship with God. I learn wisdom under my pastor, under my Sunday school. To anybody that throws out the word, it's wisdom to me. And so my job is to hear it and then applicate it. A um, lot of folks in hell knew truth. Why, why are they in hell? They didn't obey it. Amen. I mean, Israel was told truth. They even got to see some of it. They didn't get to see all of it because unbelief stopped them. All right. So in this, he's telling you and I, God has prepared for them to love him. Well, I tell you how I learned to love him is through hanging out with him. Man, when I when I hung out with when I hang out with the Lord in the Bible, the love of God in my heart is shed abroad through the Holy Spirit. It just kind of like it just goes in a cyclonic action. I'm throwing love in. The Holy Spirit is thickening it up. It's like a good gravy. Amen. I mean, it's just in there. It's just leathering me up. Why? Because the words of God are words of life. And the author of the book lives inside of me. And he's opening my eyes, taking the wax out of my ears. And he, listen, he's giving me the love to give him back. Amen. I mean, you figure that out. You can't pick that step up at a, you know, at a perfume shop. I mean, God's got to give you the love back to love him. Amen. Right. I can't manufacture it. Man, the first Adam disobeyed God. But that last Adam regenerated me and changed my desires. God says, before you can love me back, I got to come in there and clean that mess up. So when you think about this right here, when he says, which God has prepared for them that love him. Listen, I'm still on the journey. I mean, I can tell you stories how God has come through. Whoa, what a God. Man, he's faithful. If you hear his word and obey it, it's a journey. You think, man, how am I going to get through this? God said, I got you. How's that going to work out? God said, I got you. You just keep doing what I called you to do. And God can strut his stuff. You, have, you think Michael Jordan can do it? 
He don't compare to when my Lord starts dunking the ball. Amen. So that's what he's saying here. Wisdom will give you a healthy Christian life. So then verse 10, but God hath revealed them unto us by his what? A natural man don't have the spirit of God. His spirit's dead. If you're here without Christ, none of this is for you. You, don't, you can't understand it. you got to have the spirit quickened in your heart before you can receive spiritual things. Go back here to chapter um, 2 and look what he says here. Um, <clears throat> where's it at? Where it says um, chapter 2. Verse 14, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish unto him. You see that? Neither can he know them. You know why? Because you're dead. You have no relationship with God. Sin has separated you. See, you're missing the main ingredient, wisdom. Wisdom is Christ. Christ is the mediator between a holy God and sinful man. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. And so when you repent and confess, the blood's applied, right. righteousness is imputed, sins are dismissed, and what sin has broken, God has reconciled. Amen. Woo! Amen. Ain't no doctor in town can do that. Amen. But the great doctor up there did. Amen. I don't have a scar nowhere. Down in way down deep in there, God did surgery. So look what he says here in verse 14, uh, there, chapter 2. He says, They are foolish unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually what? Discerned. But he that is spiritual judges. Now that's where that's what revival is. We have truth. We know the verdict. I'm not sitting back here hoping I'm getting to heaven. Christ says, I've already given you eternal life. I'm not hoping he comes back. Read your Bible. The verdict has already, I mean, listen, the gavel has already fallen. It's settled, amen. As he preached through Noah that a flood's going to come and get on the ark, and he shut the door. Man didn't shut it, he shut it. They, they covered that thing with pitch. That's a word for grace. He said, I've sealed you in by the grace of God. I mean, the storm will come, but you'll be safe in the ark. That's a picture of wisdom. Amen. Babel was something that man did. Picture of rebellion. Look what I can do. God said, yeah, watch what I can do. Boom. They couldn't understand one another. They looked at one What did you say? Well, I don't want to. And everything stopped. God said, don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. All through history, the verdict's out. He's God, and we're not. Amen. So wisdom is find out who he is, realize who you are, and follow the man that knows what to do with you. Because without Christ, you're in trouble. John 5, maybe we ought to read that. If you take your Bible back, please. John 5, 24. Verily, verily, those are very tender words. I mean, that's like a grandpa saying, give me her son, sit on Papa's lap. I've been to the candy store. Amen. Verily, verily, I'm not trying to hurt you. I want to help you. Don't run from me. Run to me. Right. Bible says, verily, verily, I say to you, he that heareth my word. And what? That's action. That's faith. That's obedience. He that believeth on him that sent me hath what? Shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. John chapter 3, verse 15. May I read it to you? It's the same type of stuff, just Bible. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish means be destroyed. <laughs> you think folks would have walked up in um, the tower on September the 11th if they knew it was going to come down? I think they would have missed work that day. Yeah, right. You never know when tragedy is going to fall. But that heart that's beating in your chest is not yours. That's God's. Your soul's in there. And you are just a steward of what God's given you. It will go back to him. Your body's dying. Your hair's coming out. Your teeth falling out. You can't walk a straight line. You can't see past your hand. You're dying, man. You're out. You're going to be out of here before long. 
but your soul lives on. And you get to choose where. I think that's a pretty good deal if you ask me. So the Bible says here in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, we're kind of moving around. Look at verse 13. Verse uh, 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, thank God, right? But the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. Man, what a God. He don't, listen, He devil lied to you. God ain't going to lie to you. He speaks the truth. And he says, I want you to know, you're my sons and daughters. I want you to know what I've done with your past. I want you to know what I'm doing present tense. There ain't no secrets. I want you to know your future. Amen. Woo, I like the Lord. Prophecy changed my life. Man, when I realized he's coming back and this mess, he'll straighten it up. Amen. When I realized absent from the body, present with the Lord, boy, that gave me joy. Amen. When I realized that this fat body is going down, he's going to raise me up with a 32-inch waist. <laughs> Woo, I'm going to look sharp. I'm going to have a cowboy hat <laughs> and some brand new boots <laughs> and a belt buckle that I can see. <laughs> oh, it'll be a glorious day. <laughs> That's the way a fat boy thinks. <laughs> it will be glorious. But let me think about that. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. There are so many truths that will help you raise your family, help your marriage, give you direction in your finances. We live in a world that says, man, invest. And why would you invest your life savings in something that's going to perish? I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? The Bible will help give you wisdom Amen. with time, Amen. talent, your treasures. Right. First Corinthians chapter 4 just says you're a steward. You're going to have to give an account. I'm glad Romans 14 and 2 Corinthians chapter 3 talks about it. it don't say, don't have a big question mark like, oh, I got a surprise for you. No, you're going to stand before me. That's right. right. And you're going to give an account for your deeds. Yeah. Not my sins, that's under the blood. My works, God saved me unto good works. There ought to be fruit in your life. Some people say, well, you know, I'll get there. No, let me tell you what the Bible says. Fruit is a test of a real salvation. Somebody ought to be able to look at your life and say, man, I see fruit. It ain't your fruit, it's God's fruit. Amen. Bible says, Matthew 7, 6, ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes? That would be fruit. Of thorns, thorns is a picture of unsaved. You can't eat a thorn, or I wouldn't recommend it. Ain't nothing there good, it's a thorn. But you give me all the grapes you want. There's some substance in grapes. Or figs. I like a good fig bar. It don't mean anything to us, but if you're a Jew, you know what a fig is. Amen. It's a harvest. It's fruit. But the Lord took notice of a tree that was supposed to have figs, and the only thing it had was thistles. And it's a picture of a nation in rebellion. God says, you want to uh, see somebody that's got their anointing that I've given on them? They'll have fruit. That's a test of real salvation. Anybody can talk it, but there ought to be fruit. Right. Man, we've said enough. We go home. <laughs> Bible says uh, you ought to have some, some type of a holy character. Bible says, but now being made free from sin... And become servants of God, you ye have your fruit unto holiness. And the end of that life is everlasting life. Listen, when you get saved, he moves in and he's too big not to be noticed. You ought to have a Christian character. You ought not be cussing. Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Your kids ought to see that in you. 
The mother ought to see it in their kids if they're growing in holiness. This is a test of salvation. Man, your co-workers ought to say, man, there's, yeah, I, I get it. I see it. I want it. I mean, the jailer basically said to Paul and Silas, I want what you got. Amen. I see holiness in you. The two men on Emmaus Road. I mean, I believe that they were saved as far as what they knew. But man, when they saw who Christ was, he opened their eyes. He said, man, just follow me home. I want more of this. And he went to the house. That's called hospitality. Hospitality is a fruit of holiness. My home's your home. That's what we've felt all week. We've sat at the table with the maples and we've eaten their food and enjoyed their fellowship. And man, what a time. That's fruits. That's a fruit of holiness. See, the Bible says right here, um, the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. If you're growing in the Lord, those ought to be a character that you ought to see. That lets you know, man, I got it. Because two years ago before I was saved, before I grew, I wouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Bible says meekness, temperance, Christian character. It is a test of true salvation. There ought to be some type of works that identify that you're involved in eternal things and not temporary things. I'm not talking about coaching a bunch of kids on a softball field or playing golf with the, um, you know, whatever club you're, uh, I'm talking about doing something for God. I'm talking about evangelistic work, trying to reach somebody. Surely goodness you've won somebody to the Lord. Who are you fishing for? Who are you praying for? For. I mean, who are you fasting for? Somewhere there ought to be a burden that represents your father's concern. He loves the world. And we ought to love what he loves. I'll give you a Bible, Colossians 1.10, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Here it is. Being fruitful in every good work. And then the Bible says, and increasing in the knowledge of God. There ought to be a thirst for him. Yeah. I got real concerns about folks who said they got saved, got baptized, you don't see them. That's right. Something didn't happen. I don't, I don't understand that. There ought to be a desire. If, if they receive the Spirit of God, that Spirit longs to be with the people. God's Spirit gathers people. Amen. Amen. The devil, what does he do? He separates. But he, God says, let, forsake not the assembly. There ought to be a desire to hear the preached word, to hear singing like we heard tonight. These are, this is revival. Amen. Bible says, I'll give you just one last one. This is all just getting started, but we'll get you out right on time. Winning others to Christ. I told you that, Romans 1, 13. I purpose to come unto you, Paul said, that was let hitherto that I might have some fruit among you. Paul said, I don't come to play chess. I'm not coming, you know, just to see your house. I'm coming to preach the Word of God. I want to tell you about a living Savior who changed my life on Damascus Road. And not only has He changed mine, but He'll change yours. That's right, Everywhere Paul went, he had fruit because he did business. Occupy, that means do business until I come. Right. Amen? Amen? So God help us not to lose our ear. Let me read this verse, Matthew 13, 13. He says, at the end and hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. It's kind of like they're not saved. Let me just say this to you. You better get this. No seed, no fruit. What's the seed? The Spirit of God. The Word of God. Sometimes there's no fruit because you've never been born again. Now listen, devil's good. I've read books. I've studied this. Devil's so good that as soon as someone genuinely gets saved, he goes right to work to make sure that he sows a counterfeit. Am I right, preacher? And, you, and the only way you can tell them apart is an old enough Bible, and you can usually tell when you're with them. Your spirit won't bear witness. That, the devil hates it when somebody gets genuinely saved. He wants you to think you're saved. 
You know, I, I came to VBS, I believe, somewhere in that week. No, come on. You ought to know when you confessed your sins and bowed your head and asked God to come into your heart and save you. Amen. So what he's saying is <clears throat> there's no fruit because there's no seed. If a planter, if a farmer puts an ear of corn in the ground, what is he expecting? If you say you have an apple tree and I'm invited to come and get some apples, when I show up, you say you got an apple tree, I'm looking for, you say you're a Christian, I'm looking for fruits, amen, amen. that bear the, the nature of the seed. It's not hate, bitterness, and cussing. There's a, there's a change. Perfect no. Start out babies, yes. But either you're growing or you fall into carnality. Okay, so I got to hurry. You all ready? Bible says, Proverbs 7, hearken unto me. Now, therefore, listen, don't lose your ears for the things of God. Israel went deaf because of unbelief, rebellion, and indifference. All those things fall in the category of losing your spiritual ears. Bible says, hearken unto me now therefore. The word hearken means not only hear, but be obedient. See, the blessings don't come until you step out in faith. I would never be here tonight. David wouldn't be singing and is married beside him unless there's a time God said, I'm, I've told you, I'm waiting. And then if you don't do it, probably when you should do it, and we've talked about this, God said, all right, I'm going to bring adversity in there. You know, how, you know how to get, you know, sometimes the devil puts some grain in your eye so you'll start rubbing it. And he said, just keep rubbing it until I get your attention. And then you realize, man, I'll tell you what, God, what is it you're wanting? He said, well, I want your heart. Yeah. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Whatever it takes, if he has to aggravate you or bring some type of adversity in your life, God says, I own you anyway. And I saved you to bear fruit. If you've got wax in your ears, I got a Q-tip that'll fit it. Amen. And when he starts digging in your ear, it ain't fun. Be careful. If you lose your spiritual ear, Israel did. Read Hosea. You know what he did? He said, all right, I'm going to start out. I'm going to start out with, uh, what was it? He had the, um, oh, oh the, the moth. Oh, my goodness, a moth, you just... Get away, man. What are you doing? I'll step on you here in a minute and put you in eternity. I'll flop. I'll just, you know, I'll knock you out. If, if you would even notice it, it would just, you don't even hear it. But God says, I'm trying to get your attention. And here we are. God said, okay, I'm going to take the moth out of your life. You can read it. It's all in Hosea. There's three of them. He said, if, if the moth don't get your attention, I'm going to send the eagle in. The eagle, just with the pressure of his talons, can take an animal twice its weight, carry it for miles, and tear it asunder. At 200 miles per hour, an eagle can come from a mile in the sky down and see a fish and grab it before it knows what happens. What he's saying is the moth might be slow and it might be gentle. I don't want to bring the eagle in, but if I have to, I'll bring the eagle in and he'll be swift and he'll be strong. And what he'll accomplish to be quick, he sent the eagle in. And he does this through nations. He does this through people. God is so big, even though, for example, Israel, go take care of the Babylonians. And instead of taking care of them, they fall into their practice of worship. And so God said, all right, you want to join them? That's no problem. I'm going to take the ones that you're supposed to be a witness to and turn them against you, and I will use them to accomplish my purpose. Figure that out. So the eagle didn't get their attention. He said, all right, come on out. Come on. Get out of there, eagle. And he told him, I'll bring the lion in. And the lion's big and strong, and one swipe of his hand will knock you 
off of your feet. And one bite on your juggler, you'll be like a towel. And he threw the lion at him. And Israel was so deaf and so blind that they didn't even see what God was trying to do. And God did something that you better hope he never does to you. God said, okay, I'm going to back up. I'm going to step back. And I'm going to give the devil permission to do to you what I have protected you for generations. And you wonder why Israel is a mess today? It's because God has stepped back and pulled the blinds down. See, it's a serious thing when you and I don't take God serious. It's a serious thing when church is not that important. It's a serious thing when other things begin to distract you in life. You think, well, nobody knows. God notices it. And he'll deal with it if you're truly born again. Hebrews 12 says he'll chase you. If if you're not chasing, you're not a child of God. You're a bastard. So you got got to know this thing. You got to say, man, bless God. I'm just doing what I want. God ain't doing anything. Don't brag about it. You ain't saved. You got bigger trouble than anybody. So he reminds you and I in this verse uh, in Proverbs 7 24, obedience. Then he says in Proverbs 8 34, Blessed is the man again that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. What he's saying is there is a desire, there's a thirst for God. If you've lost that, God help you, you got to get it back because something will something will fill that thirst. If you're not going to let God do it, I promise you there will something out there that you will yield to. Right. Bible says many times your ears are deaf because you're shallow. Let me give you a verse, Matthew 13, 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, catcheth away that which was sown into its heart. God says, I'm trying to get the seed into your heart, but you haven't prepared your heart. What happens to a seed that lays on top of the ground? Devil comes and gets it. You know what it means? You can't bear fruit. You say, what's the big deal? That messed with your deeds at the beam of seat of Christ. That throws a problem with the character of Christ that you ought to have in you. It brings up another thing. What's God going to have to bring in? The moth, the eagle, the lion, or is he going to step back? I mean, you say, well, it's not a big It is a big deal. Right. When you quit hearing from God and seeing from God, I just read to you in First Corinthians, he has remarkable things. God's got big things he wants to show you. He can't show you all at one time. He shows you by every step of obedience. He just releases a little bit, and he releases a little bit. You can see it in Abraham's life. You can see it in Moses' life. You can see it in David's life. I mean, if he gave it all to us, we'd choke. But little by little, as long as we keep our ears clean and keep our eyes where they ought to be, God said, I'm going to let you see things that a natural man will never see. And I'm going to guide you. And you're going to hear things that a natural man can never hear because you are spiritually born again. And we read last night, you are pure and clean. And because of that, I can trust you with things that those that are in the world cannot be trusted with. You notice uh, with Abraham, the angels, the messengers came in his house because Abraham had nothing to hide. They came in. You notice Lot met him at the door, said, uh, can I help you? You ain't coming in here. I know God don't don't agree with what's going on here. And the men knew what kind of life that Lot lived, and they offered him a bargain. Hey, we like men, man. We saw men going into your house. Bring them out. You think that's evil? Yeah, it's evil. God knows how real we are. And you wonder, why is he allowing things in our life? Maybe it's a deep in the soil a little bit. Because he's trying to get your attention, but every word he throws out there is falling on hard soil. Shallowness. There's, the next one's hardness, Luke 16, 31. And he said unto them, if they hear not Moses, Jesus said this. If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. This is close to the cross. 
I mean, Israel got to the point where they stoned the prophets. Moses was a great man, and they did not listen to him. God said, I said, Jeremiah, he wept at your doorsteps. You did not listen. You're saying, God, show me who you are. God said, I've showed you who I am. You didn't have eyes to see or ears to hear. Right. Wonder how many times God sent a message. And we didn't even know it. Because we have no eyes and no ears. Hardness. Though one rose from the dead, you want me to do something? I've been doing it. Haven't you seen me in the sunshine and the moon? Haven't you seen me every spring when that which is dead comes back to life? Haven't you see, seen that I bear everything out naked before you in the fall and it dies? I'm God. No, I don't see it. The Bible says, James 1.23 Forgetfulness helps deafen your ears. For if any man be a hearer, that word hearer is obedience. Amen. Because James says, don't be a hearer, be a doer. Okay, James 1.23, if any man be a hearer of the word and not a he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass and not doing anything. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way. But the Bible says, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. It's a serious deal when you and I won't take heed to what God's telling you and I so he can give us wisdom to honor him and that our life much, would be much more fruitful. But instead, it's falling on hard ground. God help you and I. Oh, may we see great things, but may we hear and learn to be obedient in small things. Right. It could just simply be three nights a week at church. It could be get up for Sunday school. It could be a daily devotion. It could be witness to your neighbor. I mean, somewhere, take the, the steps of obedience and watch God bless He'll bless you. He'll bless this church. You say, well, how, what do I do concern this church? You are a part of this body. You belong to this local assembly. Your life counts. It helps this church to go forward for the glory of God. All right, so it's a big deal. Bible says in Hebrews 5.11, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. That means that you're unable to listen to the word, receive it, or even act upon it. It's there, but you don't see it. One man said one of the first symptoms of a spiritual regression or backsliding is a dullness towards the Bible. You know what happened when Nehemiah had a great revival? Ezra said, man, God said he'd bless us again. This ought not be happening. And Nehemiah said, talk to me, Ezra, talk to me. He said, man, the word says if we'll get things back in place, get the Bible back out and hear the commandments of God, be obedient to the word of God, that he'll help us rebuild this. They got burdened. Nehemiah was a layman. He wasn't no preacher or priest. He was a man that worked outside, but he got a burden for what God wanted to do inside. Amen. For the first time, his eyes got open. He said, oh, my goodness, the temple's down. The walls are down. What a shame. Man, we ought to be a, a city with God's protection. And he got a burden. But it all started with the word of God. Yeah. That Bible ain't important to you. God said, I can't do nothing. Right. Your eyes cannot see and your ears can no longer hear. John 16, 12, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. That's a prophetic declaration. You know, what he really, you know what he wanted to tell them? And he did, and they didn't get it. You know when Christ walked down into Jerusalem and began to weep? He said, if you only knew in a matter of a few years what you have all this glory in the outside of this temple and all, it's going to be in ruins. Romans are going to come in and wipe you out. 
And he said, there's no excuse because the prophets told you this. I will present myself to be your king. But you're going to say, crucify him. They didn't even see that God sent them a king. Right. I'm telling you guys, you start, you start pulling rocks back at all this stuff and these truths just hit me. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, America is right there. Right. Man, I look at my grandkids and I hold them tight. And I get them, you know, to every patch the pirate and, and my, thank God my daughter but I want them to know young God loves them and this world's going down and even though we're in it we ought to be of it amen if you don't teach them why their heart's tender why are they going to see in the days to come dullness unlearned ignorance the writer of Hebrews just simply said this there's a lot more I wanted to share with you that I couldn't because you was dull of hearing. Wonder how many things God would like to tell you and I, but he can't because we haven't matured enough to handle it. I wonder what more you could do at the church if you just would grow up a little bit. And I don't mean it in a bad way. I'm just being honest. And God could do great things. Can I give you just a few more? Proverbs 18 to a fool. A, you know what a fool is? A fool is always quick to give you an ear, but he won't receive it. Now you think about that. Oh yeah, I'll listen. Thank you. See you. He's always hearing but he never learns. Amen. Bible says in Proverbs 18, verse 2, a fool hath no delight in understanding. I don't want to know the future. Whatever happens, happens. Boy, that's a bad attitude. Well, whatever, I'll just deal with it. No, you're a fool. A fool has said in his heart, there's no God. I'm not accountable to anybody. You better read the Bible. Every knee will bow. Salvation is we bow now humbly. In the future, you will be bowing humbly. You'll be forced to bow. You, you give your sins here. Over there, you pay for your sins. I'm glad he loves me enough to cast a vision to the future. So he tells you and I right here, a fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. One of these days, philosophy or the big bang, somewhere the truth. No, are you serious? No, that ain't going to happen. Can I give you another one? I heard that, yes. Proverbs 24, 30. I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of a man void of understanding. You know what slothful means? He's lazy. And you can watch their life. They stand for nothing. They'll just go whatever. Who's, you know, it don't matter. If it puts more money in my pocket, I'm for it. Amen. Amen. Acts 13.27. This is, this is a statement concerning that they ought to have seen Christ. I want you to listen to it. For they that dwelt in Jerusalem and their rulers, that be Pharisees and Sadducees, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, I just talked about this, which are read every Sabbath day, even when the Lord came in on that Friday, or, and then the next, very next day the, the prophet stood up, bless God, we ought to have a king coming from Zion. He'll be born in, in Bethlehem. And yeah. They read it, but they didn't see him. Right. You know how many people hear a message and it just don't go nowhere? Why? Their ears are full of wax. That's a picture of the world, rebellion, indifference, unlearned. Right. Listen, you put a 12 gauge in someone's hand, they don't know what they're doing, they could get killed. You buy somebody a 9 millimeter and say, hey, it's loaded, good luck. Ignorance will cost you. That's why there's triple A. <laughs> People sit on the side of the road for a long time because they don't know how to change a tire. But if somebody knows how to change a tire, you don't call a triple A unless you're fat like me. <laughs> you all carry come out here and get on your knees. But what I'm saying is knowledge is freedom. Right. 
The more I know about who, where my sins are, I'm free. The more I know about the empty tomb, I'm free. The more I know he's on the right hand of the Father, I'm free. The more I know that heaven's being built for me, I'm free. Knowledge helps me. Amen. 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 But here the Bible says, I went by the field of the slothful, by the vineyard of the man void. He has nothing in order. He has nothing that he's, no purpose. Just kind of here. He says right here, and I'm done. It says, Nur yet the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. Here they are in the synagogue being read about what they're about to do. Maybe it's in Zechariah. They're reading it. And God sent his son. He's been there 33 years, born as a baby. Twelve and went into the temple and blew their minds for three years. Miracles after miracles after miracles. And they still didn't see it. You know why? Because God blinded them. I'm just telling you, man, it's serious business. If you're not in the Word of God, if you're not growing spiritually, then if you're not growing, then you're falling backwards. I'm not talking about your soul. I'm talking about your life. We need revival. Oh, I want to see, I want to see revival. It starts with you. So, man, could it be that God wants to share a lot more, but he can't? Don't worry about it. Worry just to think about you. Because it's kind of hard to pass something down that you don't know yourself. It's kind of hard to be convicted when there's no soil for the seed to fall on. Amen? It's kind of hard to see how this virus and all these things. I mean, I know enough Bible to know that God's, God's using this. That's right. I don't want to see it clearly, you know, yet one day. I mean, as I believe as days go, Pastor, that we'll, we'll see things. Things will begin to emerge. Could be the election. I don't know. I just know that America's not in prophetic uh, future that I can see. Right. So where do we go? Do we sell out? Do we go to socialism? Or did another country come in and invade and take us over? We're not in here. So enjoy your freedom while you got it. Somewhere we disappear. Could be after the rapture. I don't know. I, the Bible don't say. But we're not in here as far as under America, the Western civilization. Not there. So a question comes up. God was good to England, and God said just moved away. America's young. We're only, what, 247 years? That's not very many generations. And look how quick we went backwards. Now you think, well, why don't everybody see it and straighten up? They're natural men. They don't see the things of God. They don't have the Spirit of God. We might have been started out right, but we haven't kept it right. Amen? So, we need revival. Bible Baptists, love you, enjoy being with you, but we're not here to play tequil toes. We're here to say, man, listen, let's all think about it. Whatever God wants to do, get it right. Amen? If you're here and you're not saved, just get it. Just give Him your heart. He's been asking you and asking you. And he's just waiting for you to say, yes, this could be your day. Amen. Amen. Heads about, eyes are closed. Thank you for your attention. How many can lift your hand and say, preacher, I know I'm saved. Thank God if I were to die tonight, heaven's my home. I want to see your hand. Would you lift it and say, me, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. All right, God bless you. Thank you, preacher. I don't, man, I... <laughs> I want to be, but I, I don't. Know, I don't have any peace. But I want you just to keep me in prayer. I want to. I want to get it settled. I need to be saved. Can I see your hand quickly? You might like that. Just lift it up, preacher. I need to be born again. I want to be. I need to be saved. I do not want to die and go to hell. Is there anybody like that? Quickly. 
Let me ask you this, preacher. I'm saved, but my ears are not what they used to be. My eyes are not seeing like it used to be. I believe the soil of my heart is harder now than it has been. God spoke to me through the Word.